Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting Adobe Premiere tutorial. A little while ago I created this tutorial for absolute beginners where I took you through how to edit and export a film project from start to finish in Adobe Premiere Pro. Even Walter got into it and after burning his computer to the ground a couple of times he finally got the hang of using those basic tools to apply a simplistic workflow and create his own film projects. The problem is just that once you teach that guy how to use a hammer, well, everything kind of starts to look like a nail. In my absolute beginner tutorial, I only showed you how to use the very basic tools, the razor and the selection tools to edit your source clips. Now, there is nothing wrong with sticking to the basic tools, but if that is all you use, your editing workflow can become rather cumbersome, especially when you're working with larger projects. Fortunately, there are a large number of additional tools available that you can use to make a lot of the very common editing tasks a whole lot easier. So in this tutorial, I want to show you how you can streamline your editing workflow with some of the more advanced editing tools available to you in Adobe Premiere Pro. In my last Adobe Premiere tutorial, I showed you how to use the hammer. Now let's move on to some of the finer tools. Before you even start to drag your source footage into your sequence, you can actually preview and trim down those clips in the source monitor in Adobe Premiere. This can be really useful, especially when you're working with really long video files that may contain multiple takes. Once you've got all of your clips cut up and laid out in your sequence, there are, besides the basic razor and selection tools, seven additional tools available to you that you can use to greatly enhance your editing workflow. These tools are the Track Select Forward and Track Select Backwards tools, the Ripple and Rolling Edit tools, the Slip and Slide tools, and finally, the Rate Stretch tool. Now, don't feel intimidated by all of the tools in your toolbox. I am going to explain all of them in detail and so this is going to be a pretty basic tutorial. My only assumption is that you've at least watched my absolute beginners tutorial and that you have a basic understanding of the workflow for Adobe Premiere Pro. But enough of me talking, let's jump right into the tutorial. Here we are in Adobe Premiere and I already have an empty sequence set up. Just like we did for my absolute beginners tutorial, we will be using some of the footage from our Zombie Hunter short film. I already have all of the clips here imported into my project. Now, the very first thing you will want to do is to get this footage into your sequence. You may be tempted to simply drag and drop these clips straight into your sequence. However, that can be a problem, especially when the clips are rather long. This one here, for example, is pretty long, so let's zoom out so we can see the entire clip. This is a pretty simple shot, but it is rather long because it does contain a lot of takes, most of which are just outtakes anyways. Just towards the end here, there's one take that I really like and that I want to cut out and use for my project. In order to achieve this, you may scrub to the time position where you want the clip to start and then go over into your tool panel and select the razor tool. Personally, I always prefer to use shortcuts and for the razor tool, that is C on your keyboard. Then place an edit point or a cut right on your timeline indicator. Now let's scrub forward to the end of the clip that we want to keep and again, using the razor tool, let's place another cut. You may then go back to the selection tool or press V on your keyboard as a shortcut to switch to it and then delete the clip after and the clip before the piece of the footage that we want to keep. Finally, you may drag the remaining piece around in your sequence and place it exactly where you want it to be. Now, all of that worked reasonably well, but it was pretty cumbersome. There was a lot of actions, we did a lot of different things and there's a much easier way to achieve this. Let's delete the clip again out of our sequence and let's go back into our project panel and double click on the source file to bring it up in the source monitor in Premiere Pro. This is just a little video player that you can use to play back and trim down the source footage that you're working with. It has a simple playhead that you can move around to scrub through the source footage and most importantly, it has these two little switches here to place an in marker and to place an out marker. Again, they do have keyboard shortcuts, in this case I for mark in and O for mark out and I do recommend that you memorize as many keyboard shortcuts as you can. It'll just make your entire editing workflow a whole lot faster. Now, rather than dragging the entire clip into my sequence, I am going to use the source monitor to find the spot where I want my clip to start, which is exactly this take here towards the end. Press I to place an in marker, then go to the end of the clip that I want to keep, which is probably about here, and press O on my keyboard to place an out marker, 
And now what is going to happen is if I drag this clip either from the source monitor or from my project panel into my sequence, I will only pull in the little piece that we marked with the in and out marker. So the piece that ends up in my sequence is the trimmed down section of the clip that I wanted to keep. Let's repeat this process for another clip. Here's the first person shot of me approaching the concrete dividing wall. Again, I'm going to scrub through my footage to find the position where I want this clip to start. Press I to place an in marker, then move forward to, yeah, probably about here is where I want my clip to end. Press O to place the out marker, and then I can actually drag this clip straight from my source monitor down into my sequence. Don't let go just yet, because we want to position it before the clip we already have in the sequence. If you just dragged it on and let it go, it would override the clip that is already in that place. So let's undo that. Let's do the same again, drag it from the source monitor down into the sequence, and now hold down Control, which will push all of the following clips forward, and drag it to the beginning of the sequence and let go. This clip now got squeezed in before the clip we already had in our sequence. Let me quickly go through and repeat this process for all of the other clips that I still have in my project, just to finish a very rough version of the edit. Bam! And I'm done with a very rough initial edit. Now one of the common challenges that you may face, especially when you're working with rather large projects, is that you may have to insert new footage elements into an already existing sequence. Here, for example, I have my final edit for my last tutorial, which was on how to green screen properly in Adobe After Effects. And as you can see, it contains hundreds and hundreds of cuts. It's a very long sequence because there are a lot of edit points and I've recorded the video and the audio separately, so they are all edited together. And this is just a rather big piece of project to manage. Let's zoom in a little bit and let's assume for a moment that I forgot to insert a piece of footage that I really need to have in the middle of this sequence. Now, a very simplistic solution may be simply to zoom out all the way so that you can see the entire tail of your project and then start selecting everything after the moment where you want to insert a new clip. Zoom back in and make sure you've got all of the pieces selected that you want to push forward and then use the selection tool and simply push all of those clips towards the right to make a gap in your sequence. Now, while that wasn't the most horrible thing in the world, it was rather cumbersome. Let's undo that and forget that we ever did it that way. A much easier way is simply to use the track select forward and track select backward tools. Let's select the track select forward tool or press A on your keyboard and then simply click in your sequence. Now what this tool does, it actually selects everything in your sequence from the current point forward. So if you now zoom out, you can see that this tool selected everything behind the point where I clicked. This then allows me to very, very easily select everything from a specific point onwards, go back to the selection tool and push it forward. Didn't have to zoom out, I didn't have to manually select all my clips. I simply had to select the track select forward tool and click a single time. Let's zoom out a little bit, go back to the track select forward tool by pressing A. And if I click, you can see how it selects everything after the point that I'm clicking. Similar, the track select backward tool does exactly the same thing, just opposite. So select the tool, and now if you're clicking, you're selecting everything before the point that you're clicking into your sequence. This makes it relatively easy to manage large projects where you have hundreds and hundreds of clips without having to constantly zoom out and select them all manually. Now let's go back to our Zombie Hunter project. Now once you're done with a very rough edit, you will start refining all of the cut points and making sure that everything is nice and smooth and tight and you know, fits really well together. And for that, obviously, you're going to have to trim and adjust all of your clips. Right here at the beginning, for example, let's say we wanted to trim down this first person shot to cut over to the side and shot a little bit sooner. Now you can either use the selection tool and drag the clip down or you can use the razor tool to cut it and simply delete the piece that you don't want to keep. Then you could use the track select forward tool to select all of the following clips in your sequence and pull them forward or what I personally prefer to use, simply right click into the gap and then select ripple delete. This will delete the gap and pull all of the following clips forward in time. And done, we've adjusted the edit point and it looks a whole lot cleaner. However, there is a much simpler way to do this. Let's quickly undo what we just did. In the tool panel, you will find the ripple edit tool. The ripple edit tool kind of works like the selection tool, but it automatically ripple deletes for you. Let's find the point where we want to cut and then with the ripple edit tool selected, simply drag the end of the clip forward to the position where you want to cut it. Let go and bam! Adobe Premiere automatically ripple deleted the gap that would have been created had you just used the normal selection tool. Don't tell me that wasn't easier. 
Now, I'm not sure you actually noticed, but something very interesting actually happened in my preview window as I was using the Ripple Edit tool. Let's reselect the clip with the Ripple Edit tool still selected and let's start to drag the end of the clip backwards and forwards. In your preview window, you will see two images displayed side by side. The one on the left represents the last frame of the clip that we're currently dragging on the left side of our edit point and the clip on the right represents the first frame of the clip that will follow it. Because we're only changing where the clip on the left side of the edit point ends, only the left image will update. This is a feature I really love in Adobe Premiere because it makes it so easy to place the edit points exactly where you want them to be. Another tool that makes it really easy to manage the edit points between your clips is the rolling edit tool. Now, the ripple edit tool will either shrink a clip and delete any gaps that would be created, or it will expand the clip and push all of the following clips out. The rolling edit tool doesn't actually create gaps and it doesn't actually push your clips out because all it does, it actually slides the edit point that sits between two consecutive clips forwards or backwards. With the rolling edit tool selected, click on an edit point and start dragging it backwards or forwards. In your preview window, you will now notice that both the frame on the left and the frame on the right will update simultaneously. That is because you are shifting the point in time where the clip on the left side of the edit point will end and where the clip on the right side of the edit point will start. You are essentially scrubbing the edit point over the underlying footage contained in the clips on both sides of the cut. Again, at least in my opinion, I think this tool just makes the editing workflow a little bit more seamless because you don't constantly have to push things out or delete gaps and move things around. You're just managing the edit points within your clips. Now, a little bit further down in the sequence, I have this macro shot of my hand on the trigger twitching. Now, let's say I wanted to shift the contents within this clip a little bit without affecting all of the clips that follow it or without affecting the clips that are before it in the sequence. In order to do that, you can use the slip tool. In your tool panel, you can find the slip tool or press Y on your keyboard. And what the slip tool does, it will actually slide the contents of this video layer backwards and forwards without affecting any of the edit points surrounding this clip. With the slip tool selected, click and hold on the clip that you want to slip and then drag it backwards and forwards to adjust the contents of this clip. I just want to select the sections where I'm just kind of twitching my finger out of nervousness and then putting it back on the gun. Yep, about here seems right. Notice that in my preview window, I currently see four frames. Now, the frame on the top left is the last frame of the clip that is preceding the one I'm currently slipping. The frame on the top right is the first frame of the following clip. The two big frames on the bottom, on the left and right, are my beginning and end frame for the clip that I'm currently slipping, so I can figure out exactly which part of my underlying footage I'm going to include in this clip. So there you go, and I just got that little nervous twitch off my finger as the content of this clip. If I scrub backward a little bit, obviously I don't want the macro shot to occur after I have moved away from the pillar. I kind of want the finger twitch to happen pretty much right about here. Now again, there are multiple options of doing this, but one tool I have not yet shown you is the slide tool. In the tool panel, you will find the slide tool, which is you on your keyboard. To use the slide tool, simply click and hold on the clip that you want to slide and then drag it backwards and forward. Again, you are going to see four clips in the preview window, but this one is a little bit different. Basically, the two frames at the top left and the top right, they're not the same, they look similar, but they're not the same. They're actually the start and the end frame of the clip that I'm currently dragging around. The frame on the bottom left is the last frame of the previous clip and the frame on the bottom right is the first frame of the following clip. So let's find the point where this clip should sit, maybe about here. So just as I'm reaching the pillar, it'll cut to a nervous twitch on my finger. Now, here's a little bit of a problem. Because we pulled this clip forward, the following clip got extended to start a whole lot earlier, which is really not what we want. We really want to cut back to the point where I'm just about to make the move, maybe about here in the timeline. And again, we can use the ripple edit tool for that. So press B if you remember the shortcut. And then let's simply drag the beginning of the clip forward so it starts right where we have the timeline indicator placed. Notice how the sequence collapses and the gap that would have been created if we had used the selection tool was automatically deleted. And now if you play this little section back. Yes, it's not perfect, but I really just want to demonstrate all of the cool tools that you have at your disposal. 
Now, the very last tool I quickly want to touch on is the rate stretch tool, which again, you can find in your toolbox. The rate stretch tool, just like the name suggests, is used to stretch or compress the length of your clips. In doing so, it will either slow down or speed up your footage as you stretch it. Let's go to the end of the sequence and use the very last clip because it'll just be a little bit easier to demonstrate. With the rate stretch tool selected, let's shrink this clip down to maybe a third of its length. Now, this will speed up the clip in order to play back the entire content it held before in the shorter duration. Alternatively, if you want to slow down the clip, you can obviously just use the rate stretch tool and stretch the clip out for as long as you want to, and it'll basically play back in slow motion. And that is the last tool that I wanted to show you to give you a good overview of all of the more advanced editing tools that you have available in Adobe Premiere Pro. I highly encourage you to start using these tools, get familiar with them and learn all the shortcut keys. I guarantee you it will make your editing workflow a whole lot faster. And that's all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. If you want to see more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And I would also greatly appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. If you want to get in contact or simply stay up to date with what is going on, you can also find and follow me on Facebook, Twitter or on Google+. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I will see you later.